welcome to the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. Right then, hello and welcome back to GTR2 and race 2 of the weekend here at Donington Park for round 9 of the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. Had a fairly decent result yesterday, finishing 12th. I didn't notice at the time that Roberto Ravaglia actually managed to get the win in front of Simone and Tarquini. Unfortunately, due to problems with the Alfa Romeos, they decided to withdraw from race number 2, um, so there's going to be a couple of empty spots on the grid at the very start. But apart from that, Everything should go according to plan, and uh, yeah, we'll join Josh then for the gridwalk for round number nine. As we always mention with any doubleheader race weekend, there is additional drama and excitement with the fact of who can make it onto the grid for race number two after mechanical issues and damage in the race. And the big names are missing once again, they've not withdrawn this time. But both Alfa Romeo 155s will be unable to start due to technical issues that occurred in race one, means they cannot start race number two. So let's take a look at the depleted front row of the grid then, and it is Roberto Rivalia taking pole position after winning the first race. He has an empty grid spot alongside him where Gabriele Tarquini should be. Row number two, and it's Jean Piero Simone's empty space there. Another missing alpha on the grid. Joaquin Winklock goes it alone, row number two, and it gives him a really clear run down into the first turn. Row number three, and once again, it's an old Vauxhall Cavalier affair. John Cleland ahead of his teammate, Jeff Allen. Julian Bailey continues his impressive weekend in his Toyota Carina, commencing row number four, and he has Paul Radisidge alongside him, the first of the Ford Mondeos. Alamenu starts row number five and he has the impressive James Kay alongside him in his independent Toyota Carina. Andy Rouse starts row number six and he has Dan Bala in the first of the 850s alongside him for company. And on row number seven it's Will Hoy and he has Tim Harvey alongside him. Another did not start, this is going to be David Leslie's empty space where his Mazda Exedos should be. Patrick Watts commences row number eight all on his own in his Peugeot 405. Row number nine, it's Keith O'Dor. He has Jan Lammers alongside him for company in the second of the Volvo 850s. And on row number 10, another of the independents, Jeff Steele. He has Eugene O'Brien alongside him. Row number 11, it's the third of the Volvo 850s. And he has Eric van der Poel in his Nissan Primera alongside him. Tim Sugden commences row number 12. Amy Irvine in the independent BMW 3 Series alongside. And on row 13, it's another Vauxhall Cavalier affair, this time Ian Khan ahead of Nigel Smith in their respective independent cars. And on the back row of the grid, it is Nigel Albon and Chris Godwin bringing up the rear. All that remains for me to do now is to hand you back over to Dan for the race start and race commentary. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Josh, as always, for the grid walk for round number nine. As you can see, Roberto Ravaglia is all on his lonesome at the very top of the grid. A massive gap, and then his teammate Joachim Winkhock starting in fourth. Well, technically second. Um, everyone else, though, is going to be starting in their respective places they finished yesterday, including me. I finished 12th. So technically, I'm going to be uh, starting in 10th place because of the absence of of the Alfa Romeos. Now I did make a mistake yesterday, I thought the points went down to 15th place, it's been a while since I've actually collected any points for this championship, so yeah I thought 15th place, top 12, I've got some points but no it's only the top 10. So unfortunately I'm still only on 17 points for the championship which isn't too bad you know for the Volvo. But uh, anyway we'll see how we get on today, let's hope it's going to be another clean race like yesterday's was, and uh, yeah we'll just see how we get on. Here we go then, the sun is setting across the uh, Donington circuit, and away we go. Immediately trying to block my line and Tim Harvey gets past anyway. Right, will we all make it through the Craner Curves in one piece? And the answer to that is yes. Couple went a little bit wide of kicking up a bit of dust. There's old Andy Rice, 
in the Mondeo. Get the car slowed down enough. Oh, losing the rear end a little bit. Unfortunately, the grass does suck you in. Didn't lose that much time, though. Thankfully. There we go. One lap complete. 14 to go. There's my main rival behind, Patrick Watts. Had a few run-ins with him so far this season. Excuse me, excuse me, Watts. My word, ma'am, what are you doing? That was not intentional. I had the inside line, but he decided to cut across. Tapped me, and then he went for a little spin. And now he's down into 21st place. Slowly gaining back on the Ford. Not that quickly, though. Oh, I really can't wait to take all this excess weight off the car. It's going to handle so much better than it does now. Because right now, it, it just it feels very sluggish, you know, it doesn't turn very well. It, the body roll, the, um, the understeer, the oversteer, the sluggishness on the uh, acceleration. So, yeah, roll on to the last race of the season where I can just take all the weight off. And race the car as it should be. bit of understeer while accelerating to be expected in a front wheel drive now hopefully with Andy Race and Tim Harvey battling up ahead that should slow them down I might be able to reel them in
good run coming out of coppice. Someone else having a good run as well is Jeff Steele in the BMW. He's currently in 13th place. Right, so Andy Race is 3.6 seconds up the road. We'll check on the next lap, see if I'm reeling him in or not. Ah, looks like Will Hoy lost it a little bit going through coppice. That's given us a bit of breathing room. And to answer that question, though, we are actually losing time to Andy Race. 3.6 seconds of previous lap, 4 seconds that lap. Get off, get off, get off. Oh. Will Hoy give me a nudge? That's done no damage at all, so that's cool. Get out of the way. I want my position back. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. You go wide. Go on, bugger off. G 
Jeff Steele's got past him. Cool. He'll be able to slow him down for me. And there is another lap complete. Next lap will be the halfway mark. Trying to break a little bit earlier for the corner so I don't burn up my tires too much. Doesn't seem to be working that well. Teammates aren't doing great either. Ricard Rydell 17th, Jan Lammers 15th. So once again, I am carrying the Volvo team on my shoulders. There's still a very long way to go in the championship. We're only on round nine. 21 rounds this season. And the next two rounds, there is another double header as well, coming from Brands Hatch GP. And everyone knows I am not going to do well there because... Uh, yeah, because I don't like the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. But that's to be expected. Locking the front end again. Coppice is the worst uh, corner for that. There's Jeff Steele creeping up on my boot lid. And another lap complete, six to go. And then it'll be another weekend over and done with. I 
I don't know why that dark line on the outside of uh, Redgate keeps disappearing. It's a bit annoying. It does it on the replays as well. And this one down here, it does it. Going through the old hairpin. I think it's just a shadow glitch of some description. Uh, Jeff still did have a look. At the inside, didn't have the oomph coming out of the corner, though. They were able to fend him off. Starting at lap number 11. Nigel Albon, once again, isn't last. So this is definitely going to boost him in some points. Slowly pulling a tiny gap just under a second from steel. Not huge. Lap 12, four to go. And looks like it to be another clean race, like yesterday, no uh, accidents so far, no retirements. So everyone has been behaving. And at least this track is running nice and smooth compared to Alton Park, which was laggy and awful. And most of the barriers are missing. Well, there you go. Now, I wonder, James K is currently in 10th place. Um, because he is an independent, I wonder if that technically puts me in 10th to get some points. Because, of course, he's got his own points championship to worry about. I think it does, you know, so I think 
technically, if James K isn't there, we're on course for a single point. Mmm, tasty. Three to go. Ooh, broke way too early for that corner. Speaking of James K, there he is, just ahead. Two laps to go. Unfortunately, Patrick Watts was not able to recover. He's still in 22nd. From his little spin. Yeah, front tires are gone. <laughs> to be expected. Oh, we just got to survive for one and a half laps. James K just up ahead. I wonder if he's got a little problem. Because he did have uh, problems in qualifying. His engine expired. We're like two minutes to go. Either that or his tires are gone. Looking on the map, everyone is still circulating. Jochen Winkelhock has now taken the lead from Roberto Ravaglia, so he's going to increase his championship lead. Jeff still with a last-ditch effort. Oh, Roberto Ravaglia is taking the lead back again from Winklehock.
Uh, looks like it'll be two wins out of two. I think just one more lap, I could have had James K, you know. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Oh well, 11th place. So that isn't too bad. I will take it. And there we go, race is over. So, uh, yeah, nothing to really write home about. Same as yesterday, a bit of a... A mediocre race but uh, we got some good results so that's all that really matters my teammates though 16th for Jan Lammers and 17th for Ricard Rydell Roberto Ravaglia though comes home the winner with both victories in both races so with that I'm gonna throw it back over to uh, Martin Haven for the uh, race results and current championship standings after round nine a double victory weekend at Donington Park for Roberto Ravaglia. After winning race one, he led a BMW 1-2 in race two. Jochen Winkelhock taking second spot. And John Cleland and Jeff Allen vying for the third podium position. The Scot again winning out as the better of the Cavalier duo. Into the top six in race two, the Renault Laguna of Alan Menu And Paul Radisic putting his Mondeo in sixth spot. Among the privateers, a double race winning weekend for James Kay at Donington Park in the Toyota. Jeff Steele claiming a second podium finish with second. And Ian Kahn, the top cavalier among the privateers, finishing third. Ahead of the BMW of Hamish Irvin, the Renault 19 of Nigel Alban. And Chris Goodwin making it into the top six in his cavalier. So what has Donington Park meant for the championship? Well, Jochen Winkelhock, with a fourth and a second, continues to lead the standings from John Cleland. Gary Lee Tarquini in third spot in the Alpha, moving up fast on the rails with double wins in Donington. Roberto Ravaglia up to fourth ahead of teammate Steve Soper. Jeff Allams Cavalier in sixth position. Privateers points see James K continuing to lead and now with a near 50 point margin. Nigel Smith, the Cavalier driver in second place. Jeff Steele's good weekend moves him up to third as Chris Goodwin, Ian Kahn and Jimmy Thompson in the Peugeot round out the top half dozen. And there we go, another race weekend has come to a close. I'd like to extend my sincerest thanks to Josh of the Moaning Yorkshireman, as always, for providing the gridwalks, and Martin Haven for providing the race results and point standings after this weekend. So, I did manage to get one point during the weekend. I salvaged a single point for race number two, so I'm up to 18 points in the championship standings. But Jochen Winkelhock has extended his lead to 150 points over 98 with John Cleland so he has a 52 point advantage over Cleland and a 59 point advantage over Gabriele Tarquini so it's going to be very tight it, it, come the end of the championship whether Tarquini can catch up and uh, overtake Winklehock. Um, another standout performance as well from Roberto Ravaglia he's only a stand-in for Steve Soper and he's whacked himself up into fourth in the championship standings above Steve Soper that is phenomenal anyway with that, I will end it here, and I will see you all next time then for the next double header, which comes from Brands Hatch Grand Prix. So thank you very much for watching, as always, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.